Hi, I'm Cheryl and this is Manny. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this cute little bunny. This is a great addition to put in a little Easter basket for a special little girl. Now I've used Easter printed fabric. I used polyfill on the inside and the face has little applique pieces and also on the feet and it gives it so much personality. Also the pattern that I'm using offers little clothing pieces that you can make. It's just an option. This won't take long to make at all. It's a really easy project. But before I get started, I just want to let you know that at the very end of this video is a link that you can click on to learn how to make this cute little elephant. Now remember, it's at the very, very end of the video. I get viewers telling me they can't find my links. The very, very end. You have to go all the way to the very last shot. Okay, let's get started. Now, all of the pattern books out there, such as the McCall's, the Simplicity, Butterick, and others, they will all have stuffed toy animals in their pattern books, and they're all pretty simple. The one I'm using is by McCall's. It's called Easy Stitch and Save. The pattern number is M9327. Now this not only has the cat, the dog, and the rabbit, it also comes with a bear on it too. On the back, they list the information about the fabrics you can select. It's pretty much any cotton or cotton blends. They also recommend felt to use for uh, the eyes and the feet. And you'll also notice down here that the bear and the dog have a little skirt pattern that comes with this. The vest is on the bear. I'm pretty sure would also you could put it on the rabbit if you wanted to. One of the reasons why I like buying these toy animal patterns is they are great appliques to use in the center of a baby quilt. So even if you don't want to make the stuffed animal, you can use the pattern to create that machine applique to put on the quilt. To fuse the appliques onto the rabbit, I'm using a product called Light Easy Steam 2, and it's lightweight, two-sided, pressure sensitive, fusible web. You can get it at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts, and you can also get it on Amazon.com. You'll also need Polyfill Ultra Plush. It's super soft polyester fiber fill. You can get this at Walmart. This is where I purchased it. You can also get it at Joann's and also on Amazon.com. One thing that's neat about this is on the back, they give you patterns for other toy animals. So after you've emptied the bag, don't throw the pattern away. This is the pattern sheet. If you don't understand how to read a pattern, I have a video in which I go into great detail on how to read patterns. And that link will be at the very end of this video. The very last little screen you'll see will have that link on it. On your pattern instructions, it gives the layout of how you lay your fabric out. Your selvage edges are right here and your raw edges are here and here and here is the fold. Lay your rabbit pattern out accordingly. Go ahead and pin it down and cut it out. You're cutting two pieces of fabric so you get them cut all at the same time. The pattern instructions for toy C. There is no specific section for it. They reference that you follow the instructions that are for the bear, which is view B. Also, there are instructions that are used for all of the animals on how to do the applique pieces for the eyes and the feet. I'm going to go over suggestions for how to make the little appliques. The pattern Instructions recommend that you turn your pattern over to where you're looking at the back side of the pattern. Then you take your fusible web, which is it's really thin. There's two sides to it. 
there's very plain paper on one side and on the other side I don't know how well you can see it are these yellow grid lines this is the side would be face up so they recommend you place it over the top and then trace what you see back here I found that to be a little difficult because I couldn't see it that well so what I did was I went over this with a pencil to try to darken the lines which helped a little bit for me but after tracing them I didn't think my shapes came out very well and here's what happened with the eyes look out one eye is really bad and the other eye is okay so I'm going to show you another option you can follow these directions just like they gave them and you might get great results but I found I was I wasn't happy with what I did alright so let me show you another trick I went to my photocopier printer and took a picture of the head and all of the features on the face and then I also photographed both feet so I cut the shapes that I needed out of the uh, copies that I made traced them onto cardstock it's thin cardstock I use this all the time when I'm doing my applique projects you can reuse these pieces over and over again when you're done you can just store them in the pattern envelope and you don't have to worry about struggling to see through the fusible web paper to try to trace these so these are the two pieces you need for the feet the two pieces for the eyes and this is the nose after you've traced onto your fusible web re remember make sure you trace on the side that has grid lines on it you're now going to remove the paper off of the back and I'll show you that in just a second so here's my fabric for the feet this is the front side or top side of the fabric I'm turning it over to where the back is and that's where you're going to put down your applique pieces so take that paper off of the back make sure you're not removing glue off of there it should feel very sticky and then lay it down and finger press it down so here's all my pieces for the feet here's my eyes and there you go after cutting out all your applique pieces now is the fun part you get to put it on the bunny so what I've done is I've laid the pattern piece back over one of the fabrics so you only need one side and this is the front side so lay that down lay your pattern piece over the top now I placed pins along here because I want it to be stable so as I lift the pattern piece and slip my applique pieces underneath I know exactly where I need to lay it it also helps if you have a pair of tweezers because my hands are very clumsy with really tiny things so I find tweezers really help so what you want to do is fold after you've pinned it down fold the paper back the pattern piece as soon as I get a hold of it there we go and I started with the nose and I'm folding it back exactly where the nose starts then I took the backing off of the applique piece used my tweezers to set it down if you don't like where it's placed you can still lift it up so what I've done after I've placed it down I look through here and if it looks like it's pretty much there I go ahead and leave it there and I'll finger press it down you do that for all your pieces so how you get the paper off the back here's the little eye you take a straight pin if you're having problems getting the paper off the back take a straight pin and score the paper and then bend it until a corner of the paper comes off and then you just take it off okay now I use a pair of tweezers to get a hold of it because like I said I'm really terrible at this and then this is easy to do just place this down if you don't like where it is you can always do a check pull it back over I need to lower it down just a little bit because I haven't finger pressed it down just yet I can still lift it and replace it and then of course check again this time it looks good 
So as you go along and each piece looks good, you would just finger press them all down. Now I've already done the feet and the feet are done the same way. So you would pin the paper down, lift it up and place your pieces in there. I recommend that your applique pieces that you do applique stitching around the edges. It gives it a really nice finished look. So you can either use thin paper like this and or this stabilizer. It's called Tearaway Stabilizer. Either one works. This paper I got at Home Depot in the paint department and it comes on small rolls up to really large wide rolls. The, to get the lips on right here like they've shown they didn't really tell you how to do it um, so they probably thought you'll either just freehand draw it but you have another option there's carbon paper that you can use so you can just pin your pattern down so it stays stable Oops. lift up your pattern and place the carbon paper right there where you want to trace it I'm going to put it right below the little nose if I got it there correctly oops wrong piece of paper yep right one and lay it right there lay your pattern piece back over the top and take a pencil or a fabric marker something that you can push down with and draw over those lines okay and when you're done you have your stitch line done for the mouth I'm using this dark fuchsia color and I'm also going to use it on the feet the white is going to be for the outer eye and this bluish greenish light turquoise color is going to be for the inner eye when it comes time to do your stitching around the mouth area they recommend you do a small satin stitch which is right here this is a medium and this is a large when you do your embroidery stitches you should use an embroidery needle because you'll get much better results with your stitching when you're doing your embroidery stitches you take that tear away stabilizer put it on the back and when you're done stitching it tears right off really easy when you're doing any kind of embroidery stitches with your machine it's always a good idea to use an open toe presser foot so there's nothing in front of this needle so it makes it really easy for you to see exactly where you're stitching now I've selected the satin stitch on my machine and I lowered my needle down exactly where I wanted it to start. Now my machine has a feature on it in which I can select that whenever I stop stitching the presser foot automatically lifts up and the needle stays down so that when you move your fabric you don't lose your place. If you have that option, I would turn that option on. If you don't have that option, every time you turn, you need to turn your fabric, make sure you leave the presser foot up, but before you lift the presser foot, lower the needle so you will not lose your place. So when you're doing going around curves, you need to go really slow. You don't want to go too fast because otherwise things aren't going to come out that even. And you just slowly turn your fabric until you go all the way around. After you finish doing all of your stitching, don't forget to tear off this stabilizer on the back. Now that you've got all of your stitching done, you're now ready to put the back piece of fabric onto the front piece of fabric. On the pattern at the very bottom of the bear, where the legs are, there's a square here and a square here. This is where your opening that you're, is that you're going to leave there so that you can insert the polyfill batting later. So pin all of your edges, bring front sides of your fabric 
together. You're going to start here, do a few stitches back and forth. Then you're going to stitch a narrow quarter of an inch all the way around. And when you get here, this is where you're going to stop and do a few stitches back and forth there. Now remember, we're following the instructions for the bear even though we're doing the rabbit. On the instructions, it shows you where to do little clippings on the seam. And it's where all the curves go in with the exception of out here at the ends of the hands and the ends of the feet. So make sure you clip those areas. On the points of the ears, I would also take a little bit of the fabric off. Leave at least an eighth of an inch there at the point. So cut some off at the tip and then go and cut some of this off on each side. And then down here at uh, where it curves between the two ears, also I would do a slit this way in the middle and then going off this way. And be very careful you don't cut any of your threads, your stitch line, while you're doing these cuts. Before turning it front side out, I recommend that at the opening, you fold these edges back and either finger press or press with your iron so that after turning it front side out and you stuff it with the polyfill, it's easier to close that opening because the edges are automatically going to fold in for you. After you've done that, reach inside and turn this front side out. Then your pattern instructions recommend that you press it before stuffing it with the polyfill. As you're turning it front side out, and if you're having problems getting the pointed ears and the hands and feet to come all the way out, inside of your bag of the polyfill is this little stick. And you can just go up in there and go around and start pushing the hands out and also the ears. After you've got everything pushed out and you've done a little pressing on it, then through this opening, you're going to insert your polyfill. Now don't take a great big piece like this. You want to break it up into small little pieces. And then you're going to fill in the ears first, then the face, then the arms, the feet, and then the rest of the body. Make sure you pack it in real good. You'll be surprised how much of this polyfill you can put inside. After inserting all of the polyfill, you want to close up this opening. So fold those edges in a quarter of an inch. And I like to use these little uh, quilters clips to temporarily hold it together while I stitch it closed. So now you want to do a ladder stitch along here, which is a kind of a hidden stitch. If you do not know how to do the ladder stitch, at the very end of this video is a link you can click on and it's very detailed on how to do that ladder stitch. Well, I hope you had fun learning how to make this cute little bunny rabbit. Now, don't forget, at the very end of this video is the link so you can learn how to make this cute little elephant. Now, if you like this video, click on the old thumbs up button and click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, Click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to enter your email address and click on that little bell so you receive future email notifications. I'm Cheryl and this is Manny. So glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time and happy sewing!